Hey everybody and welcome to session four of Diffusion of Innovations. Um, let's look really quickly at the course plan. Just to kind of position ourselves within the larger perspective of the semester. Okay, so this is a two-week session and um, we're going to look at the concerns-based adoption model, which is a diffusion model. Um, we're going to think about teacher change and barriers to technology integration. Um, the major output that's due during this session is the barriers presentation. Um, it sort of relates to some of the things that you'll be reading, but also relates to your, it can relate to your major project as well if you desire. Okay, so just very quickly, um, you are currently um, working on Reading Journal Part 2 because you have previously submitted Reading Journal Part 1. I'm going to go look back at the course plan just to remind you, you would have submitted Reading Journal Part 1 in the previous um, session. And most of you, I think my instructions say to make a new document for Reading Journal Part 2, and that's fantastic if you do that. You could also do what a few people I know always seem to um, combine it with the previous one, and that's fine as well. Either one it works, as long as I'm seeing that building and that continuation of, you know, interaction with those readings, you know, light interaction with the readings. Okay, so as you read these things that are in this session, obviously you um, will want to go check on the reading journal prompts related to these as well. Um, we have a short chapter from Gura on striking a vision. Uh, that becomes, you know, relevant definitely to part three of your project um, because you all will be, you know, creating a plan that's sort of based on a vision that, based on the, what you're learning about your context and your innovation and your um, stakeholders. We're going to take a look at the concerns-based adoption model, also called CBAM. Um, we have a video series that you can watch. You can, um, if you go to this, so this is the original sort of outlining of what CBAM is and how it works by Hall. He also has lots of colleagues that have worked with him as well. This uh, document will sort of explain the three diagnostic dimensions of it. So the video introduction will, you know, kind of give you an overview of it, including all of the diagno diagnostic dimensions. And then these latter videos will go more deeply into each of those. So what is the stages of concern? Um, you know, what are those stages? What are the levels of use of an innovation? Um, and what are innovation configurations? All three of these are sort of useful measures to take when you're looking at an innovation. Um, it's very much about um, the people that are going to be using and deploying that innovation and making sure that you're keeping close track of what they think about it. Um, you're not expected, by the way, to deploy a CBAM um, plan for Part 3. That would be a very in-depth um, project. But it could be that there are things that you can learn from CBAM. In fact, I would say, and I've never said this to classes before, but it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it makes a lot of sense to define your innovation configuration early in your um, in a project where you have an innovation. That's just a very useful thing. Otherwise, people might be doing a completely different interpretation of an innovation. So that's a good thing to sort of define. Um, and all of these th th these could be useful to you in your part three plan, but it's not necessary that you do use them. So just kind of learn from them and, and see how they could be used. And it could be they inform your part three or or not necessarily. Then the next two uh, peer-reviewed articles look at teacher, teacher beliefs and knowledge and confidence in relation to technologies that they may be using. Um, a lot of really great insights. These are this one especially is a very seminal um, work in the field of instructional technology, um, which is why we keep using it. Uh, and you'll and it, and it is in this one. I think actually I think both of them talk about first and second order barriers, but that is a term that Ertmer um, coined prior to this article. She's talked about first and second order barriers, and those are going to come into play in your barriers presentation. Okay. So optionally, if you want to see a quick chapter that's all about 
CBAM. It's brief, but it kind of gives you, it pulls it all together here. Um, Ellsworth's chapter seven does discuss that as well if you need a little bit more. So let's look really quickly at the barriers presentation. It's an individual project. Everybody does it on their own, but it relates to your group project. So it is tied to something you are working on with your um, peers. It, it may relate. In fact, let me, let me clarify that. Um, so you're going to create a multimedia presentation on major barriers to creating tech enhanced learner centered classrooms. So you may speak generally sort of the way that um, Ertmer and Ottenbright Lefwich and on and Rigeluth do in those two peer-reviewed articles. Um, or you can speak specifically, if you want, about this topic in relation to your major project topic. So people do it both ways in this class. Either one's fine. So um, what are first order barriers? Just kind of, you're basically just kind of teaching and informing us about what are major first order external barriers, what are second order barriers, um, giving examples, and then how can you help teachers to overcome this. So again, you can speak generally or you can speak specifically to your project. Um, I think it might be better to speak to your project, um, potentially, it might be more fun um, than just kind of informing us about these things, but um, it's up to you. You're going to submit it to two places. Um, you're going to submit it both to the Actually, let me go back out here. You'll submit it to the Dropbox Barriers Presentation for grading, for private grading. And then you'll submit it to the discussion board as well to share with your peers. And you'll want to respond to a few of those. I don't want to click on this because I don't want to put people's names on the screen. But um, just be sure you follow the instructions in that discussion on how to interact. Um, and so that's it for session, session four. Um, in the background, of course, you've got group project part two going on as well. If we look back at the course plan, we see that that is due at the end of session five. So as you know, if, if you need more time, we actually have time built in this semester. So be thinking ahead as a group right now. If you're like, okay, we need more time for this big project. It could be that you want to, because look, I have it set up, it's kind of crazy, to where part three is due November 10th. It could be that as a group, you want to decide, okay, we're going to get part part two. So hear, hear me now. We want part two done before Thanksgiving. And ideally, you would try to get it done before that Monday of Thanksgiving week, just to give everybody a break. Wouldn't that be nice? So you could you could make this decision as a group. I'm okay with this. So part two done by that sort of Sunday before Thanksgiving week, um, and then part three, you could you could turn that in um, by. I have to Sunday December one at midnight. If we need a little more wiggle room, I will I will give it to you. I will give it to you the week after Thanksgiving. Um, let me let me open up a calendar really quickly. Okay, so graduation is the fourteenth. Um, if you need some time during this week after Thanksgiving to get part three in, I know I say December one is the final cutoff, um, but really I hate to wreck your Thanksgiving, so. You know, you could get it in if if you're really scrambling. I would let y'all get it in somewhere during this week, maybe by Friday or something, just so I have enough time to grade it. So if that is needed, because I I know that I have kind of a severe um, schedule here. So let's stick with this as the plan for the schedule. But again, if as groups you decide and you agree, all agree as a group, that you can extend your deadlines a little bit. I'm okay with that. As long as you try to get part two in before Thanksgiving break week and um, part three needs to come in, you know, in the next, in the five days, you know, by Friday of that week after Thanksgiving. Okay. So enough of that. Um, session four, I hope y'all have a great time. I need to get your part one feedback back ASAP. That's going to, what I'm going to work on right now after I post this video. Thank you.